These are the opening lines of the story of Henry and Grace. You are never more alive than when you are a teenager. Your brain is flush with chemicals that can turn your life into a story of epic proportions. And a minus feels like the Pulitzer. A lonely sunny night is an eternity of solitude, and your lab partner becomes the great love of your life. Henry is a high school student who has a passion for writing. He is now in his senior year in school, and he is hoping to experience some exciting things this year. He has two close friends in his school, a loving family and parents who have been in a happy marriage for a long time, and his writing. One of Henry's dreams is to become editor-in-chief of the school newspaper. He goes to an interview and learns that he and another girl, Grace, who recently transferred to school, and who used to write for Gazette, will share the position of the newspaper's editor and work as a team. Henry is happy to hear the news, but Grace suddenly gets up and says she doesn't want to be editor, and leaves. She is walking slowly due to using crutches and her leg seems to be hurt. Henry follows Grace from school and asks her why she rejected the offer as it seems like a good opportunity. Grace doesn't want to answer and asks Henry why he would care about what she did. As they are talking, Henry realizes he missed his bus and he lives far away from school. Grace reminds him he can still walk and they start walking in the same direction, but not talking to each other. After a couple of minutes of walking in silence, Grace reveals she lives close by and drives a car, so she can drive Henry home if he wants to. Henry agrees and they arrive in front of Grace's house. He asks her why she doesn't come to school by car, and Grace explains she doesn't like to drive. Grace drives Henry home, and as they are in a car, they are listening to a song. Henry gets home and his parents and his sister tease him about a girl who gave him a ride home, left her car in front and walked away. Henry's sister is angry at love, and she seems to have been cheated on in a relationship recently. Henry reveals he got the job and his family is proud of him. Henry goes to his room and checks Grace's Facebook profile and her pictures. He googles the book of poetry she was reading, by Pablo Neruda. The next day, the professor at school explains to the newspaper team what the process of work will look like. They will issue a couple of newspaper editions throughout the year and the final one will be the most creative and experimental one. Some of the members of the group comment on last year's edition not being good. Grace says she will be assistant editor because she heard Henry really worked for this job. After school, Henry talks to Grace about the poem she was reading the previous day. And while they are talking, he misses his bus again and asks Grace if she can take him home. After driving Henry home, Grace leaves her car again parked and a bit later, some man comes by and takes the car. Henry spends the afternoon wondering who the man is. He wants to send a message to Grace and ask her but he stops himself from sending the message at the last minute. Henry is talking to some of his colleagues at the newspaper office, and he and Grace are among the last people to stay at the office. Grace takes him home in her car afterwards, and Henry asks her if she wants to hang out. Grace refuses at first but she then suggests meeting at 6 p.m. in front of Henry's house. Henry accepts the agreement and Grace tells him to bring a loaf of bread with him. Henry waits impatiently by the window for the meeting and sees the same man picking up the car and driving away. Henry meets with Grace and asks her about the car. Grace is a bit mysterious and simply says they don't need the car anymore. Grace takes Henry to an old abandoned building that used to produce plastic bottles. Henry follows her and seems confused but also intrigued. Grace asks him to hand her the bread loaves and she approaches a small pool in the middle of the room. As she throws the breadcrumbs, a lot of small fish appear. Grace asks Henry to be quiet so as not to scare them away. She gives him her hand and they both go into the pool surrounded by small goldfish. Grace tells him about the car accident that happened about a year ago, and how she sometimes has physical therapy in the pool. Henry tells her about his writing and how he sometimes doesn't really know what he is feeling until he writes it down. Grace talks about humans being made up of the ash of dead stars. We get a limited amount of time with each other, until we drift apart. Grace finds an old inscription on the wall that she wrote when she was 14. Henry asks her what it means, and Grace admits she used to be a vandal once upon a time. She doesn't tell him about the inscription, and she quickly gets up and says she needs to leave now because she feels tired. Henry is back at his home, thinking about his meeting with Grace, and he decides to break one of the bowls he is collecting into pieces and then paint it and glue it back together. His sister walks in to check why he is up so late and she tells him about the heartbreak she is experiencing in medical terminology. She explains the brain registers it as the same kind of impulse as if it was a physical pain. The next day at the meeting regarding the papers, Henry is leading the meeting and he asks if anyone has a suggestion for the theme of the final issue of the newspapers. One of the team members suggests having an Alice in Wonderland themed newspaper issue, and the professor asks Grace if she has a suggestion. Grace doesn't feel inspired to speak and she asks if she can go to the toilet. On the school bus, Henry is talking to his friends about Grace, and what happened. One of his friends jokingly suggests to follow her and see where she is going and whether she has a boyfriend. Henry follows Grace and realizes she is going to the graveyard. Grace picks some flowers and leaves them at the grave. When Grace leaves, Henry approaches to check the name on the grave. He does research and finds out the person who died was Grace's boyfriend and they were both in a car accident about a year ago. 
Henry receives a message from his friend, saying Grace is at the stadium doing some exercise, and that he better go there. Henry asks his parents to lend him their car, but his parents want to know first where he is planning to drive to. Henry is reluctant to answer, and his father tells him that he is welcome to keep his privacy, but he shouldn't lie to them. They end up not giving the car to Henry. Henry gets to the athlete field later that night and sees Grace trying to do some walking exercise, falling on the floor and crying in pain. Before Henry goes to bed, he gets a message from Grace suggesting they meet tomorrow at the library. The next day, Henry finds Grace in the library, and she opens up about what she has been thinking about recently. She explains she was analyzing the syllabus in their school and found that many books, such as Catcher in the Rye or Romeo and Juliet deal with the struggles of the young people, of not being able to cope with emotions, and thinking about or committing suicide. She says it is difficult to be a teenager and that adults are just teenagers who successfully made it out of the limbo teenage years. Grace suggests the theme of their final issue should be teenage limbo, and Henry really likes the idea. The newspaper editorial board watches a presentation that Henry's sister helped with, about the human brain developing, through various phases of teenage years and adulthood. Henry talks to his colleagues about the death of his friend a couple of years ago, and how he didn't know what to do with the magazine that he never returned to his friend, and so he buried it next to the school tree. Grace and Henry walk back home together and spend some quality time in the next couple of days getting to know each other and getting closer. Henry suggests some events and Halloween parties for him and Grace to attend, but she refuses and says they might go another time. One day, after school, Grace asks if she can come to Henry's home, and they go inside. Henry's family is there, sitting at the table and they are happy to finally meet Grace, because they have only seen her car so far. Henry and Grace go inside his room, and Grace checks out the numerous items in his room. She asks him about the pottery he is making, and he explains it's an ancient Japanese technique, of putting together the broken pieces of bowls and pottery, and mending them with colored gold. Henry and Grace sit on the bed next to each other, and they are about to kiss, but then Grace hears the same song that was playing in her car, and she gets upset. She asks Henry why he is playing this tune, and he answers that it reminds him of the two of them. Grace says it's not their song and leaves Henry's house. Henry follows her and tries to stop her, he asks her whose song it is. Grace explains it's Dom's song, meaning her boyfriend who passed away in a car crash. Henry tries to tell her that he understands if she doesn't want anything to do with him. But Grace comes back, kisses him and leaves crying. Henry stays behind her, confused by what is happening. He runs after her and suggests to drive her home, but Grace refuses and tells him she is not one of his broken vases that he can just mend. At one of the newspaper meetings, the group is discussing the party later that night. Les says she wants to go because Cora will be there as well. Henry is determined not to go because he still feels bad about what happened between him and Grace, but La wants him to go so he can be her emotional support. Henry hears there will be some cush at the party and finally decides to attend the party. At the party, Henry smokes weed from the big pipe and gets pretty wasted. In the meantime, Le is hoping to talk to Cora but Cora is busy talking to other people. Le doesn't want to get her hopes up, she thinks Cora is just playing with her. Henry is talking to the girl at the party, and he stops the conversation because he needs to drink some water. As he is drinking water by the sink, Henry looks through the window and sees Grace at the party in front of the house. She is wearing a dress and looks lovely. Henry approaches her and she says she is wearing a dress from last year. Henry is really glad to see her, and they start kissing. Le is in the kitchen and Cora comes by. She wants to talk about what happened between them last summer and says she dated a lot of girls after that. Le doesn't really understand what Cora is trying to say, so she suggests being friends. Cora assures her that she likes her romantically, and they decide to just be because they feel good next to each other. Henry and Grace arrive at his place. They take off their clothes, and Grace asks him to slow down because her leg still hurts. She shows him her scar and says she hopes he doesn't have too high expectations. Henry answers he has never done this before with anyone, and they start kissing and making out. The next morning, Grace and Henry are sleeping in his bed. Grace wakes up and starts sobbing. Henry is on the balcony in his house, he calls Grace but no one answers. He leaves a long voicemail, saying he hopes she had a good time the previous day, and suggesting to meet again, but emphasizing that he doesn't expect anything. Once Henry hangs up, he realizes the message he left was really long. Some time later, Henry receives a message from Grace saying she can't remember the last time someone left her a voicemail, and joking about how she thinks the message is a bit awkward. Grace suggests they meet the next day. Henry is waiting for Grace to arrive the next day and she comes in her own car. Henry is surprised to see her driving and she explains she feels it was about time to start driving. Henry wants to know where they are going. Grace takes him to the cemetery and they find the grave of her ex-boyfriend Dominic. She says she is ready to love again and in a way wants to move forward in love. She takes off her necklace that has an inscription, save me and I will save you, and places it over the photo of Dominic. She and Henry kiss and hug and stay there for a while. Henry and the editorial board are celebrating the first issue of their newspapers, they all feel proud of their achievement. 
Henry is waiting for Grace in front of her house, and some woman comes out running and drives away in her car. Grace appears as well, and they both get into the car. Henry asks her about the woman he saw, but Grace doesn't want to explain anything about her life. Henry realizes he doesn't know much about her at all. She parks in front of Henry's house and they get into a fight. Grace repeats that she doesn't need saving and that Henry shouldn't try to help her. Henry opens the door and walks out of the car. Henry is at one of his editorial meetings, and Grace is not present at the meeting. One of the members mentions it is the anniversary of the car crash Grace was in. The atmosphere at the office is more serious and not as cheerful as usual. Henry is on the bus, driving home, and trying to get a hold of Grace but she doesn't answer the phone. Henry walks out of the bus and starts running towards Grace's house. He arrives and knocks on the door. A man opens the door, he says he heard a lot about Grace's friend Henry, and he lets Henry inside. Henry also meets Martin's wife. He explains he came to check if everything is okay with Grace since it's the anniversary of the crash, and he didn't really get the chance to talk to her. Martin says Grace should be home soon and suggests Henry to go wait in Grace's room. Henry thanks him and climbs upstairs. He enters the room and realizes there are mail clothes and things in her room. There is a poster of a sports car in the closet and a lot of medals for sports and school competition. Henry also sees many photos of Grace and Dominic. As he is going through her room, Grace appears who has just returned from school. She says Henry finally found out the truth. Henry points out that the clothes in the room belong to a guy and asks if it is Dominic's. Grace admits she has been living in Dominic's room ever since the crash. A month before the crash, she moved in there to escape her mother's boyfriend. Henry doesn't understand why she would still live there, almost a year later, and Grace says she doesn't really have a choice since her mother stays with her boyfriend, and she could only sleep on the couch. Henry sees a necklace in Grace's hand. It is the same necklace they left at the grave. He asks Grace if she really came back for it. Grace doesn't say anything and she puts the necklace on the cupboard. Henry reminds her that he doesn't want her to let go of her ex-boyfriend but he does get upset seeing her come back with the necklace. Grace says she is doing her best, she reminds Henry she never promised him anything and he knew what he was getting himself into as she has some unresolved issues from the past. Henry says she is leading him on, and he didn't simply start dating her out of nowhere, but she was making steps towards him as well. He asks her a couple of times if she wants this to work, and she says she does, but she is also not yet ready, and not enough time has passed since the crash. Henry kisses her and says he doesn't care, nor does he want to hear any of it, he just wants to be there for her and love her. They start kissing passionately, and Henry stops himself and asks her why she is kissing him as if she is in love with him. Grace answers it is the only way she knows how. Henry is silent for a second, he then turns behind him and sees the picture of Grace's ex-boyfriend, and realizes she has been kissing him the way she used to kiss Dominic. She might have even imagined Dominic while kissing him. Henry gets emotional and leaves Grace's house. He walks home on foot. Henry returns home feeling pretty bad. His parents and his sister are in the living room and they ask Henry what happened. Henry doesn't want to answer because he thinks his parents have the perfect marriage and they couldn't possibly understand him. His parents disagree and want to help Henry, but his sister gets involved and says Henry is right. She follows Henry upstairs and enters his room. She asks what happened and whether Henry and Grace broke up, and Henry admits that he was never sure if they were together in the first place. His sister reminds him how she used to feel about her recent breakup and says that yesterday was the first day that she didn't think about her ex, and tomorrow will be her first date after a long time. She describes in detail the symptoms Henry will be experiencing over the following weeks and months. She says it is like withdrawal, and his body is craving dopamine and oxytocin, and is filled with the stress hormone. Henry's sister reminds him that it will hurt for a while, but it will pass and he will be able to move on. His sister tells him Grace is now a part of him. Henry goes to the graveyard and lights the paper with Neruda's love sonnet on fire and places the burning paper by the grave. The next day in school, La and Cora are enjoying their new relationship and kissing, and Henry seems pretty unhappy. His friends ask him what is wrong, and he says he can't stand looking at other people being in love and happy. He clearly doesn't mean what he says, but he is hurt over what happened with Grace, and he walks out of the table. Henry is at the office, editing and preparing the new issue of the magazine, and he receives a message from Dom's dad, who says Grace has been missing the whole day and he has been looking for her. Henry immediately goes searching for her. He remembers the abandoned building she once took him to, and goes there. He finds Grace in the pool, wearing a dress and crying. She keeps saying that it's her fault that Dom died. She says she was teasing him, and he asked her to stop but she didn't, and a couple of seconds later, they crashed. Grace tells him that the last thing she was thinking about wasn't Dom, but herself. She asks Henry if that makes her a bad person, and wonders what Dom was thinking about before he died. Henry assures her that he must have been thinking about her. Grace goes deeper into the pool while Henry is observing her. She gets the box with the memories of her and Dom and starts gently placing the items like photos and letters in the pool. She is watching her memories slowly sink and she feels at least partially unburdened. She also takes off the flower diadem from her head and lets it sink. Grace takes off her dress as well and comes out of the pool in her underwear. She explains it was the dress she was planning to wear when she gets married. 
Henry gives Grace his jacket and she puts it on. Henry drives her to her home where Martin, his wife and his mother are waiting for her. They all seem relieved once they see Grace in the car. Grace wants to take off her jacket but Henry tells her it is cold outside. Grace leaves the car and goes to her family who all hug her. The next day in the school office, information arrives that Grace Town will be focusing on her classes instead of the newspapers. The teacher says it seems to him as the best course of action for Grace, considering what she has been through. Once Henry hears about Grace, his look and body posture completely change. He is clearly shaken by the news. It is almost the end of the year, the new issues of the newspapers are published, and everyone is reading them in school. Henry writes a lovely note in the final issue about his experience in the school and in the newspapers. He adds that it is his last day in school and his last issue of the high school newspapers, and he wants to share his experience as a writer and a teenager before he goes to college. Henry and Grace meet in the hallway. They haven't been talking for a while. Grace looks more peaceful than before. She explains her decision to focus more on her studies than on the newspapers, and Henry doesn't say anything. Grace says that she wasn't ready to move on with her life until she was ready. Henry asks her what she is planning to do after high school, and Grace answers she will be taking a year off to continue with her physical therapy. Henry says he is planning to go to Vermont to a writing college. Henry is not very talkative ever since they met in the hall, but he seems moved by the encounter. Henry and Grace hug for a while, and as they are standing on the hallway and hugging, Grace puts some kind of a note in Henry's pocket. They separate and greet, and Grace continues walking in another direction. As she is leaving, she turns to look at Henry one more time. Henry senses a note in his pocket and opens it. It's Pablo Neruda's love sonnet, with the verses Grace was reciting a long time ago. Henry lit that paper on fire and left it on Dom's grave. Grace pieced it back with golden color, the same way Henry mends his pottery vases. Henry is about to go home, he starts walking. His friends are calling him to go inside the bus, but he says he will walk home. His friends stop the school bus and happily join Henry. They all hug and walk together. It's unclear what Henry's future holds, but it seems like he is happy.